Hi everyone and welcome back to the Lisa Lashes School of Music channel. We are continuing our Ableton beginner series where we're looking at things to expect when you open up Ableton for the first time and how to use the door. Today we'll be looking at the sample editor. We'll be looking at it closely and trying different things to see how we can manipulate samples and make them more interesting and varied. So let's dive straight in. Now if you've enjoyed these videos and this series so far, please hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for future videos. I've got this synth sample, but there is a particular part of it that I like, so I don't want to use this whole sample playing over and over again, but I would like to take a particular point part of the sample and have that playing again and again. So how would I do that? So I would double click on the sample I want to change. So since sample, double click. And now I'm looking at the sample editor. In here we can manipulate the sample more and change it and chopping up, chop it up and make it more uh, interesting and different. So let me listen to my synth sample and pick a region that I, I like and I want that to play uh, repeatedly. So let's hear. Cool. So I quite like this section here. Now, what I'm going to do uh, to pick that region is I'm going to hover around here at this top bar until the angular brackets appear and I'm going to hold down my cursor and place it where I want my sample to begin. So I want it to start here. And then I'd hover around the end of the top bar until the angular brackets appear and again hold and drag it to where I'd like the end of the sample to be. So I'd like it to finish here. So if I listen to it now, right, so I just wanted this part to play over and over again. So this sample plays over and over again because I have the loop function enabled and that allows me to play the selected region of the clip in a loop. If I wanted to just have that region play one time in my track and that's it, then I would disable the loop function by pressing on this button and now it would play once and that's it. The sample editor has a few extra useful features. One of them, as we saw, is loop, which you can turn on and off. And another uh, feature that I'd like us to look at is the warp function here. Now, something that we've covered in a previous video is the BPM of the project, which you can see here on the left top corner. So for my project right now, it's 125 beats per minute. That refers to the tempo of the track. So it means how fast it's going or how slow it's going. So I can put the tempo up and I can put the tempo down. Now, when I load in a sample, that sample might have a different BPM than the BPM of the track that I am now creating, right? So how you'd see that is in the sample editor on the BPM, when you have the warp function off, which means it's gray, you can see the BPM of the sample. Now in this instance, this sample happens to have the same BPM as my track. So say for instance, my track BPM was 130 beats per minute. So let me quickly change it here on the top left. And my sample is 125 beats per minute, right? We can see this here in the sample editor. And now we have the same synth sample I've loaded it in and with the warp function off, we can see that the BPM is 125 for the sample and it is different to the BPM of the track, which is 130. 
So let me try and play this, and it will sound probably um, not on the beat, so it will sound um, not great. <laughs> Can you hear how the synth sample is not going together with the kick sample? So to fix that, we have the warp function. As I said, Ableton compresses or stretches the sample to match the track BPM or tempo so they sound on the beat. So I press warp. And as you can see, the BPM has changed to 130, so now it matches with the track BPM. And now if I play again, this should sound much better and in line with the kick drum. In more advanced um, videos, we will see how to change and warp the sample properly so it is entirely on the beat but we'll cover that in a more advanced uh, video. So a different thing I can also do is half the original tempo. So this is how it sounds like if I half the original tempo. So basically it sounds like the melody sample is sped up right. Let me go back to my original sample and I can also double the original tempo. And if we hear it now, it sounds like the, the melody sample has really slowed down. Another thing I can do is change the pitch of the sample. And I can do that by this knob here that says pitch. And I can hold it and drag it to the right so I go plus one you can see the numbers on the bottom so I'm pitching up by one semitone two three I can do 12 semitones which is one octave and I can also pitch down the sample so let's say for example I'm pitching it down by 12 semitones which is one octave so let's hear it now So you can hear it has gone uh, down in pitch. And yeah, that's a really cool way of, of changing up a sample. Another thing you can do is hit these two arrows on the bottom and that reverses the sample. So, so if we hear it now. And yeah, sometimes you can reverse uh, effects and different like sounds to get really cool results. And this is what we're going to cover for today. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do to manipulate samples with the sample editor. And we've looked at a few more advanced uh, features compared to the last videos. Um, I hope you join me next time for the next video in the series where we'll be looking at more advanced features in Ableton and just carrying on with learning uh, what to expect when you first open uh, Ableton. Thank you so much for watching this video and joining me today. Remember to click the like and subscribe button to stay in the loop and I'll see you all in the next video.